thank the organizer for inviting me to give this talk. And uh, I will start in the continuity of what has been said, meaning that uh, I'm building from scratch a Pasteur Institute in Conakry, which is the 33rd of the Pasteur Institute network. And as you can see, these institutes are placed mostly in uh, former colonial country from France, but not only. There are some in China. There are some in Seoul, for example. There are in groups, as you can see, in regions, they have a regional logic, and the Conakry's Institute is not uh, Rosemary, Rosemary's baby, but it's an Ebola babies, indeed. It was a request from uh, the president of Diné to make an Institut Pasteur uh, to the president of France, so it's going from, from up. Um, so the Institut Pasteur of Diné is uh, located in the University Gamal Abdel Nasser campus, we have already renovated and uh, equipped the laboratoire, which we named Laboratoire Pasteur, and it just opened in June 2018, and from now, we can start to do things there and to make some manipulation. Uh, we have even three rooms with a uh, different pressure, so it's not a BSL-3, but there is a sort of uh, uh, continuity there. And uh, the building will uh, start uh, soon uh, and finish. Hopefully, we are in Guinea hopefully in 2019, at the end of 2019. And in this building, we will have platforms for diagnosis, molecular serology. You know that one of the main problems of the Ebola outbreak was that people didn't know how to do uh, Ebola diagnosis and, and many other diagnoses there. We will do a biobank. It's a bit pretentious to say that, but we'll have to save samples in good conditions, well identified that we can exchange. We will have a true BSL-3. And for the moment, we are talking about two, three units Virology, of course, because we came there for virulent fevers, rabies, because I'm, I, I know rabies a bit, and uh, entomology also, probably working with uh, uh, arboviruses. And as you can see here, I'm, I, I still see, uh, stay the, the things open because we are also discussing with the country in order to be the more, I mean, uh, complementary and not, uh, not uh, competitive with what is done there. Important, and we discussed that in the, in the meeting before, uh, to reinforce competence, and this is what we have started since we are there. We have organized something like 10 courses, molecular biology applied to pathogen detection, one health course in collaboration with the veterinary school in Dalaba, lab management, and we are doing that in collaboration with the Fondation Merieux because there is a, 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 a sort of post of Fondation Merieux which is uh, located there. These courses help us to identify people that, uh, to which we are giving fellowships for masters, for having uh, some stage in different places, and we send them in different pastoral institutes uh, of the network, also in France. We are also collaborating with Guinean institutions uh, to try to grow a master, and then in the future, eventually a PhD, which is not easy. I, I heard some presentation this, mo this morning about that from, um, uh, from my uh, African colleagues and it would be very nice to discuss more. And of course, we are making international collaboration at the level of Institut Pasteur Network and also with other institutions. I'm just citing the Friedrich Loeffler Institute, but this is open for collaboration. But I was asked to come here to talk about antiviruses. So I will talk <laughs> about antiviruses. I just take the opportunity to present that and on the mol molecular and functional diversity of antiviruses, which is one of the work we are doing in my, in my unit in Paris. So antiviruses are emerging pathogen, everyone knows that. Just a, a small word about the complexity of the taxonomy at the moment. All the names are changing, so I will not enter into detail. Uh, we have the order Brunia viralis, in which you have uh, the family uh, RNA viruses and, and also the family of uh, the former Brunia viridae. And uh, so antiviruses is one of this family, antiviridae now. Uh, one specific point of antiviruses is that they are, they are transmitted by mammals, essentially, while the other person in the family are transmitted by ticks or by insects, both to mammal or to plants or to different levels. This is a classical uh, uh, three-segmented negative strand with three segments, the S encoding the nuclear protein, as you can see here, which is protecting the RNA, the M, which is uh, making the glycoprotein on surface. There is two glycoproteins there and the L protein for the polymerase. So a bit of antivirus history. In the 50s, during the Korean War, there was a Korean hemorrhagic fever with uh, 3,000 US soldiers that were sick, 
and 10 or to 15,000 dying. Uh, it took something like 20 years up to the virus to be isolated from Apodemus agrarius, who is a, a rodent near the Antan River, you can see here, and this is the reason of the name. And a uh, few uh, years later, Seoul virus was found in rats in Korea, in people taking care of rats. And in the 80s, Pumala virus in Europe, causing a mild uh, uh, hemorrhagic uh, uh, syndrome with renal, uh, hemorrhagic fever with renal syndrome was found in uh, Europe and uh, with this bankvol neodes glareolus. Curiously, in the new world, it was nothing during a while, only one uh, isolation of uh, a virus in this rodent. And in 93, everyone knows the sin nombre virus, but unexplained human epidemics. It's a different disease, it's not a renal blockage. In this case, it's an acute respiratory distress and, and something like 50% or more of mortality. And there is a cross reactivity with Antan, Seoul, and Pumala. And after that, there is the isolation of the Sinombre virus uh, from, from this rodent. This is the situation before 93. And now after 93, you can see that many people look at different rodents there isolating viruses. In um, black, you have viruses that were not known to be pathogenic in human, and in red, the viruses that are known to be pathogenic in human. So finally, people just had a look and, and found them. Um, for a long time, it was also something atypical, a virus named Totopalayam, which was not in a rodent, but in an insectivorous, a shrew, in 71, in this part of India, in the south part of India. And no one take care, but have with the new technologies, uh, people were looking to insectivores, and the virus Seuss in 2007 was isolated in different places in Europe. And uh, now many viruses have been isolated from insectivores. Uh, the same from bats, you know that bats are very popular now, so you find also antiviruses in bats. And so it is a story which is saying that antiviruses now are rodent, insectivore, and bats together. If we are looking at a map of the different species, of mammal species, you can see that 42% are rodents, 20% are bats, and something like 8% uh, are soricomorph, so insectivores, and it's not that surprising that uh, so many viruses are present there. So this is three species, not species, but three groups of rodents here. You can see that they are everywhere. Uh, the soricidae and the talpidae, soricidae are the shrew, talpidae are the mole, and you can see the chiropter. Interestingly, the first chiropter to have been uh, uh, isolated was in Ivory Coast, which is the, uh, just the, the door close to, to Guinea. And the first uh, antivirus, rodent antivirus found in uh, uh, Africa was the Sangasu virus. And Sangasu is a small village close by to Masanta where started Ebola. So this is really a region where there is a lot of interesting things circulating. So at the beginning, people were talking, are ah, these viruses co-segregating with their reservoir, co-evolving with their reservoir, or is it species uh, transmission? <coughs> at the beginning, it was simple, only rodents. And in this case, you can see that the two trees that you can do with the viruses and with the species are perfectly matching. The situation became a bit more complex when insectivores came. You have this, this uh, correspondence from left to right, but you have also some exchange that would uh, obviously sign some cross-species transmission. So something we have done in the lab in the recent year was to try to remake a phylogeny of antiviruses using only full-length genome antiviruses and uh, taking advantage of the fossil, the, the, the datation of the fossil of the host. And so, for example, here you can see that we are in the Cretaceous, we are in different very ancient uh, period in order to see if we can make a sort of coalescence between the appearance of the virus and the datation of the, the, the vector. And if you are looking to the tree, robo means rodent born. Uh, this is insectivorous born. And uh, babo is uh, bat born. And you can see that, yes, there are some groups of robo. You have also some groups which branch together an inbo and an robo, meaning that probably it was some this this uh, exchange that, uh, that arose from, from one type uh, to the other. And we have even a group here which is mixing babo and inbo. So probably if you just remember this tree, 
I'm just doing a bit more, adding just here, so I'm, I'm sort of compressing the previous tree because I just uh, introduced here the antivirus, uh, the antivirus which has been uh, isolated from insects, and there are many, but this is one, and you can see that here, this is really uh, at the origin, and probably uh, antiviruses are coming from insects. I've jumped to uh, 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 placentalia species, robo, in bow, and in some cases only on robo, and in other cases we have found him elements that allow the transmission to another one. So the situation is more complex than we thought at the beginning, but something, something is clear, those viruses are co-evolved with their reservoir for a long time. Interesting point also, if you put this type of tree, this is the robo, so the rodent born, and this is uh, those that are uh, uh, transmitted by insectivores. In those transmitted by insectivores, for the moment, there is no human pathogen known. Those that are known are exclusively those that are transmitted by rodents. So if we are making a, a, a sort of a, a, a uh, looking only at the uh, rodent-borne hantaviruses, you can see that we have two types of viruses, those that we find in the old world, in blue, that are provoking hemorrhagic fever with renal syndrome, a lot of cases each year, but a less uh, important uh, lethality, and those that are from new world that are provoking a cardiopulmonary syndrome, less cases, but more lethal usually. And in both groups, there are viruses that are not pathogenic, for example, the prospect eel virus uh, in, uh, in, in the new world, the Tula virus in the old world, and the Pumala virus itself is pathogenic. So what we are doing in the lab is to try to compare these viruses in vitro, uh, and uh, we are doing that in different ways. One question is that, yes, these viruses are transmitted between rodents. Uh, there is an horizontal transmission with a persistence, but they are asymptomatic in rodents. There is no visibility of having any uh, difficulty there. And once they are going to humans, usually by aerosol, they can be uh, pathogenic for humans, particularly Pumala is pathogenic, is provoking an hemorrhagic fever with a renal syndrome, while Tula and Prospectil are not pathogenic. And so we are trying to compare these two models in order to understand why, jumping to human, they become pathogenic. We are doing that at different levels, at the molecular level, looking for host factors that would be specific from one species or the other. At the cellular level, different uh, entry, maturation, assembly, exit, etc. And at the systemic level, trying to recreate, for example, an endothelial barrier and look if it is broken at one moment and we are comparing different type of cell, tissues, etc. I will just show you a, a certain number of results, not that much, because we have not that much results, but fine. So <coughs> here are, you, so uh, apart from Vero, but we have human cells lines going from different tissues that we are infecting with Pumala, which is pathogenic in human, and these two non-pathogenic one, Tula and uh, Prospectil. And you can see that yes, the human cell can be infected by uh, cell lines, can be infected by this viruses. But if you are losing in a, looking with a, a more quantitative way, uh, you can see that yes, viral cells are largely infected three days post infection and seven days post infection. But the other cells are usually poorly infected. Uh, we can see that uh, this cell, the HUS7 uh, cell, which is a liver origin, can be infected by the different uh, Puma um, uh, hantaviruses, but uh, it's not uh, evident. More, more clearly, what we have done is to look at rodent cells. And to do that, we collaborate with a group of Christian Drosen, and particularly Isabelle Curley, who is uh, in the audience somewhere. And uh, they produce uh, some uh, primary cell from Myodes glareolus, who is indeed the, the, the companion, let's say, of uh, Pumala, the reservoir of Pumala. And you have different migla, so Myodes glarus, this is a migla cells coming from lung, kidney, uh, lung again, kidney, or one, one uh, cell, a primary cell, which is from the microtus, and microtus arvalis is that of Tula. If we are infecting them with the Tula, Pumala, and, uh, and uh, uh, prospectil viruses, you can see that there is some host specificity, look at, uh, at seven hours, uh, seven days, sorry. 
you can see that in the migla cell, for example, the gray one here, Pumala, is growing is in old cell, while Tula is not growing. And so we, we, we see some, some differences in, in this way. Uh, more interestingly, uh, what has been done is that uh, we are uh, prepared primary human cells, immune cells, so neutrophil and NK cells, and, and try to do the same experiment to infect them either with the pathogenic Pumala virus or the two non-pathogenic ones. What you can see here, and I'm only showing the result of neutrophil there, this is very difficult to infect cells. We have 2%, 4% of the cells that are infected. And uh, 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 indeed, uh, there is no variation in time or depending on the MOI that we can observe here. And I didn't show the things, but this is the same observation that you will do with the NK cell. We try to, to look if uh, some uh, receptors that have been proposed to be receptors for antiviruses could uh, have a, a role uh, in this. So at the surface of neutrophil or at the surface of NK cells, so for example, beta-1 integrin, which is a receptor for non-pathogenic viruses, or beta-3 integrin for the pathogenic, and you can see they are really poorly present at the surface. They cannot explain, and there is no difference that occurs between Pumala, Tula, and Prospectil uh, for, for this. Um, doing these experiments, we saw that eventually another cofactor in, uh, in a receptor could, be, could play a role in that, and also the B beta 2 integrin, but this is something which is just uh, going up. So what we try to ask some question is, does the weak percentage of infection of neutrophil or NK cell impact the viability of the cell population? So this is a result with NK cell. This is over the infection, 16 hours, six, uh, 64, etc. And you can see that, yes, there is, this is a percentage of uh, cells that are still viable. We have less and less with time, but nothing to see with whatever type of infection or whatever MY you are using. Uh, at the opposite, when you are doing that with non-pathogenic viruses, Tula and Pumala, we have the same situation, but uh, no, Tula and, and Prospectil. But if we are using Pumala, the pathogenic one, you can see that uh, over time, we have an increase of neutrophil survival depending on the MOI. The more we put MOI, the more survival we have. And there is no impact on Tula and, and, and Prospectil as I'm uh, writing here. So <coughs> we try to see if it could be uh, linked with uh, apoptosis. So we are using a marker of apoptosis, uh, apoptosis an XIM5, an early marker. And you can see when we are increasing the, the uh, MOI, of Tula and, and, and Prospectil, nothing is changing. If we are increasing the MOI of Pumala, you have the impression that there is a sort of protection of the cell, of the, of the uh, neutrophil that is provoked by this pathogenic virus. And there is a delay in apoptosis, which is responsible for the prolonged uh, survival. And you can see the prolonged survival, which is present here, while for Tula and Pumala virus, this is exactly the same timing. So. This is, where we, this is where we are. We are not more far than this. We have some uh, additional results, but I cannot, they are not solid enough to present here. So what we try to do is to understand why hantaviruses are persistent, asymptomatic in the animal reservoir, and how they jump to be pathogenic in humans. So we are comparing a human and rodent cell susceptibility. We are also making proteomics. We are making two hybrids, but I have no time to discuss that. We are comparing human and rodent partners with viral proteins, two hybrid, for example. We try to understand if the different outcomes in human, pathogenic, not pathogenic, and rodents involve distinct interaction with the immune system, which may provoke uh, a deterioration of the endothelial barrier, for example, explaining the symptom. And uh, what we found is that neutrophils from healthy donors are very poorly sensitive to the virus. But in this case, there is no difference between pathogenic and non-pathogenic. Both of them are poorly sensitive. But uh, the pathogenic Pumala increases the survival of neutrophil through delayed apoptosis, possibly involving the uh, one uh, tray uh, receptor. Uh, the non-pathogenic viruses do not. And this would be a way the virus is using as a Trojan host to facilitate dissemination. 
and uh, this would al also be a way to shape the adaptive immune response. And so this is the acknowledgement. So this has been done in, in my unit in Paris, particularly uh, by Florence Bechelier and Miriam Hermonval in collaboration with someone from the Institute Pasteur of Madagascar, who is now in the Institute Pasteur of Madagascar, Claudia Philippon. We have collaboration in France, in particular Philippe, Philippe Mariano, who is working with animal models, or Guillaume Castel, who is making the phylogenies that I presented, and uh, worldwide collaboration, Christian Drozden, Isabelle Ekele for the primary uh, immortalized cells, Alex Plusnin for, for uh, phylogeny, and uh, I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Noël.